Hi, everybody. Welcome to Calling In Your Angels and Your Guides. This might be one of the more woo uh, masterclasses that I teach. This is not one that I get into a lot with my individual clients, but certainly something that everybody always is asking for more of, more clarity around. And so this is a great opportunity for those of you who have lost loved ones or those of you who are really working to change and up-level your businesses or careers because we have the opportunity to call in guides, angels, and even our loved ones to simply ask questions and get clearer, better guidance. So if you've not watched already or worked through the Ignite Your Intuition Masterclass, I do recommend please that you go back and do that before you jump on this one because there's a lot of information in Ignite Your Intuition that will help you to understand what it is to call in your guides because it is uniquely yours how they will communicate and if you're not clear about how your intuition works for you then it might be really tough to start understanding and seeing the signals and the signs from your people upstairs so do take a pause here and go back and watch ignite your intuition right now and for those of you who have already done so and you're just pumped and excited to see how it is that you connect with your guides, loved ones, and angels, we will get started. So as per usual with tech, it might take just a teeny sec, but we will get you there. All righty. So calling in your angels and guides. This is just the best, I think. Um, we will start with the simple, who are your angels? What does that even mean? Because I think for so many of us, this is quite an elusive character, the angel. And um, from a psychic perspective, I see when I do a meditation, I always with my one-to-one -one clients and even in my group of clients, I always do a meditation. I always do a landing meditation at the beginning of any reading and we call in your guides and your angels. The angels seem to come in twos. It's rare that I've seen any more than two. And closer to this one on the right in the picture, I think it's on your right, the blue one, the blue angel, the blue angel, is how they show up for me. Now that's not to say that's how they'll show up for you, but that's how I see them. So I was lucky enough to find a picture that was close enough to how I see them and even really how I feel them because they're that elusive. They have that much potency and that much energy about them, but they're generally two angels. So who are they and what is their job? Your angels have been assigned to you since birth. And as I always like to say, and beyond. It's my belief and understanding that the angels have been with us energetically throughout lifetimes, plural. So for those of you who are new to this practice, this might sound super out there that we have not just been here for this one life, but rather we continue to come back life after life. They call it reincarnation. And you don't have to choose to believe in that today, but that is simply how I see our angels is that energetically they have been with us for lifetimes because they do not understand time and space the way that we have been given time and space here on earth. They can actually have energetically been with us that long without it feeling like, oh my gosh, 300 lifetimes, right? So your angels, <clears throat> their primary job is to keep you on your path and you'll see the path in front of you in that picture and so i see the path as being your purpose your passions and your truth and when you are in those three then you are being angelically guided okay when you're in your truth passion and purpose you're being angelically guided you'll notice when you are being guided by your angels or when you are tuning into that spirit that things are really falling into place that you feel really aligned in life, that the fear and the panic and the anxiety feeling doesn't really have a place in your life at that moment because you are divinely guided in those moments. Now, the angels 
unlike your guides, which we'll learn about in a second, the angels, you don't have to ask for help from per se. Now you can tune into them and up to them a little bit more so that you can start hearing them, channeling them and feeling them a little bit more, but they are allowed to act on your behalf, to keep you safe, to keep you in alignment without permission. Okay. Their sole job is to keep you on that path in front of you. And while we deviate often, or while we choose a different ending, it's their job to kind of follow you and clear that path and keep you safe. Now, what I hear from a lot of people is like, where were they on that super bad day that I had back in 1983? And what I want to say is a lot of the bumps and bruises that happen to us in our early life and even in our adult life are actually there to redirect. And as painful as some of those terrible, awful things are that happen to us, they are also really important to helping us create a trajectory of our life. And it's answering to those changes in our path that help us to define our purpose. I'll explain that again. So when you have had, we'll say something just traumatic happened to you in your childhood, some sort of abuse or some sort of um, accident that happens in your childhood, it automatically redirects your soul. And when you're in that redirection, we have choices. We can move our energy into the victim mentality, which keeps us on this very sort of narrow path, or you can choose to empower yourself and that terrible, awful day by taking responsibility for the next stages in your life by saying, never again will that happen to me. And here's why. I'm going to do these things to empower my system, my body, my mind, my spirit, so that I can get to the purpose that I was intended to. Now, it's okay if you take the victim way out or what I call the cop out way out, that's okay, because sometimes it takes us a really long time for the next thing to hit so that we will re reconfigure our trajectory. I believe that we're given multiple opportunities to live towards our purpose, not away from it. And there are people out there that won't choose that. There are people out there that will stay on the narrow path because it feels easier. But if you're watching this video, I'm guessing that you have already chosen to move into your true purpose and that you are following the passion and that you are noticing signs and that you are wanting to ignite your intuition and fully live in, an, in a spirited, purpose-driven way. So here's how the angels do act. When we are not intended to be hurt, not intended to have to be moved in our trajectory, Years ago, I was watching the Today Show before I was psychic or with the knowledge of being psychic before I was in that position. I'm sitting there and I'm watching this scene unfold. Matt Lauer is introducing a young lady who had <clears throat> on purpose and with full intention jumped out of an airplane with a parachute, of course. And she and her husband, this was their hobby, and they had done something like 82 career jumps in their life. And so this was maybe 83, right? And something terrible happened when she jumped out of that airplane. Her parachute didn't go off. Now, all statistics would tell us that if your parachute doesn't go off when you jump out of an airplane, that you will inevitably die. But yet here she is in front of us on the Today Show telling us her story about jumping out of an airplane and her chute not going off. She was caught by branches. She was caught by branches. A tree broke her fall. Her chute got caught in it. While it didn't go off, it had, it had gone up. So there's just the strings and she's spinning, right? So she gets caught in the tree, bounces, just a couple feet above the ground, but her face hits. The only thing that happens to her, is, to her is that her teeth get knocked out. Not one scrape doesn't die jumping out of an airplane. Gets caught by a random tree. 
knocks out a couple front teeth. That's it. And I'm watching this episode. And again, this is pretty psychic. I'm watching this episode and I get this overwhelming hit. She's pregnant. And that's why she didn't die. She was caught because there's an angelic force protecting not just her, but the child inside of her. And sure enough, the next thing she tells Matt Lauer, when he says, there's also something else remarkable about your story. She looks at him and she says, yeah, I'm pregnant. So your angelic team, albeit maybe didn't protect you at certain aspects of your life where you wished they had, will absolutely step in front of something that could potentially kill you, could potentially harm you, or could potentially knock you off your course. Now, there are strategic choices that we made before we got here. And again, this is super big news. But again, the angels are assigned to us since birth and beyond. Their goal and their job is to keep us on the path with which we chose before we came back to earth. Now, again, we're getting super big in our topic here, but if you choose to believe this, great. If not, no big deal. But the truth is, as I know it as a psychic, as I know it as a spiritual preneur, we choose to be here now. And when we decided to come here to earth again, because most of us have been here before, when we chose to come here, we set up a series of lessons. And it's our angels' jobs to make sure that those lessons play out. Now, in the case of the woman parachuting, my guess is nobody was expecting the parachute to not go off. So somebody had to catch her. Now, I don't know where this woman is today. They sure haven't done a follow-up story on her. But I'd be curious to see what her daughter has become. I'd be curious to know what happened to the child. Because there's a reason that she was caught and saved. So just food for thought, something to keep in mind. Your angels, when you're tapping in, when we do our meditation and tap into the angels, they have a very high vibration. What that means is you might hear them, you might feel a buzz here, or you might feel a buzz all over. You might even feel sort of like a womp womp of energy around you. When I tune into angel forces, I almost always get like a tink tink of music around me and I'll often get goosebumps, but I see exactly what's on the screen right there, that blue angel. It's always, always, always that color for me. Now it's going to be different for you. And again, if you, if you watch Ignite Your Intuition, you're going to see how it's going to show up for you and you're going to understand how your intuition works so that you can see or sense how the angels will show up for you. Who are your guides? Now, there's no picture here of who they look like because your guides are bountiful, bountiful. Like literally, sky is hardly the limit when it comes to your guides. And there are many schools of thoughts when it comes to your guides, who they are, what they look like, what, what they appear to be. There are so many schools of thoughts on this. There are some spiritual people who will tell you, you have three guides. Some will say you only have two guides. Some will say you could have 14 guides. I err on the side of nine. <laughs> I don't know why I chose the number nine, but it seems to be that nine is right. And they come for me in three by three format. Now, it's not to say you couldn't have 14 or that there's not two primary that show up on your behalf regularly, because I do believe that we have primary guides. And then I believe that we have all these other participating energies that we can call on at any point. Now, this part's important, that we can call on any guide that we want at any point. So let's say you are starting your business and you really need help figuring out the next stages of your business, okay? And your ego side of the brain, the aspect of you that has a tendency to to to-do list and to follow through with all the things people tell you you should do. And let's say you've been hiring coaches and strategists and you've been signing up for all the free webinars out there and you are trying your hardest to figure out how to start a business. This is where I come in and say, what if you started meditating 
And what if you started calling on your entrepreneurial guides? What if you started calling on strategists appear? A, they're free. And B, you have a very unique set of guides that are assigned to your energy in this life and assigned to your purpose in this life and assigned to the road that you're meant to be on in this life. And they're going to answer uniquely to you, not to the universe, not to society, not to how, should, or why you're supposed to, but they are going to answer and open doorways that maybe you never thought of, that maybe somebody else had never told you. There are more possibilities than the ones in front of us. And most of us are following a blueprint or, or, or a, yeah, a blueprint, an architecture that has worked for other people, but it may not work for you or your business. And this is where your guides come in. And I'll say this for anybody with just, if you're not starting a business, the same thing goes for if you're a new parent you can call on your parenting guides. If you are looking for career up-leveling opportunities and you just don't know what that looks like or who to speak to in your office or what jobs to apply for, this is where you go as well. Your guides are actually here on planet earth to help you do this thing, but different than your angels. Your guides are not invited to the party without permission. They need an invitation. You have to invite them. You have to invite them. You have to invoke them in, in a way. And you have to be, in my opinion, very specific about what you want. What I notice is that once we start playing this game, then we start not trusting ourselves fully and we start asking every day, like, okay, guides, should I go right or should I go left? Okay, guides, should I eat a sandwich or should I eat spaghetti? we stop trusting ourselves. So the guides are only going to answer really with super important, impactful things in your life. So let's be clear about not using and abusing these guides. It is not dial up, like fix me, solve me, help me. You are still responsible and hundred percent in charge of your own life. But this is an opportunity for you to like Google guide and like dear guides, <laughs> how should I best present my business? What are the best directions for that? Am I in the right business for myself? How do I put a child to sleep? Can you please help my child sleep at night? And can you show me the ways are they being communicated with on the other side as well? Because you have to understand if you have guides, everybody has guides. Now, who are the guides? <clears throat> So the guides have been assigned to your, <clears throat> excuse me, the guides have been assigned to your specific energy. And what that means is that at some point in their lives, when they were here on planet earth as well, they did similar work. They had to go through similar trials, similar experiences, and therefore they've been assigned to you. So if you're a doctor, you're going to have guides who are also doctors. You're going to have guides who also speak medicine. If you're an entrepreneur, you're going to have guides that were entrepreneurial, that did well and were successful in their own rights in entrepreneurship. If you're a new mom, you have to understand that you're going to have some mother guides there. And you're also going to be receiving information from your new child's guides. So those two guides are going to work in tandem to help you. So you can call on your child's guides and your guides and ask for help. Okay, this might be blowing your mind right now. Seriously hope it's blowing your mind right now. <clears throat> so we're going to call on specific guides while we're in our meditation. And if I don't nail the guide you're looking for, the transformational person that you really want answers from, then that's your opportunity to do so. You can choose which guides you want to call to the forefront. Now, again, there's two generally guides that I feel are in constant contact with you. They're the ones that are going to hold your hand through anything, sort of like the angels. And with the guides, what I would say as well is try not to limit the possibilities of how many there might be. Try to imagine that you could ask for anything, cooking lessons, maybe, or driving lessons or GPS. Like once upon a time, we didn't have Siri. 
and we could find our way to get to places without Siri because we had an inner guiding system that was working all the time. So really what these guides can be is also directional. My, <clears throat> my, personal, um, my personal mentor that I've worked with for years, she has what she calls um, her parking guides. So if she is driving to the mall on a Sunday and she knows it's going to be really busy, she'll call on her guides and say, okay, parking guides, I want a front row parking spot. And she swears by it that she always gets really good parking and she gets really competitive with her guides, like whose guides are better than mine. <clears throat> so she really puts them to the test and to the task. And you can too. <clears throat> so how do you communicate with your guides and angels? Now today we are going to do a meditation to invite them in so that you understand how that works and feels. But additionally, what you can do, if you've ever met me or worked with me in person, you will know I'm always like, what are you guys trying to say? <laughs> You'll see me walking down the sidewalk getting mad at my guides if I'm not getting what I need or thanking them profusely because I'm getting everything that I need, right? So call them out loud, call them out loud. Now you don't need to know their names, what they look like, how they feel, but you can just start calling them aloud. You want to meditate. You want to move your body. Oftentimes the question that we are looking to have answered, we're not actually allowing the answer to come in because we're so busy, tight, but not breathing, trying to control the situation in front of us. We do the same thing when we ask for help with our guides and angels about the time that we're like, I need help. We're already in tight butt. We're already clenching. We're already totally cock blocking any answer that could come in our way. We're totally shut off and shielded. So if you move your body, you're essentially moving out of your own way so that you can start actually getting information from your guides and your angels. This is essential. So move your body. If you're in that space of already like, I need the answer right this second, move, move your body. And then look for signs. And let's get so, so clear about the signs, okay? The more, spe the more specific you are about the sign you're looking for, the easier it is to see, okay? So call out the sign. So for... For the beginning of my communication with the guides and the angels, I didn't know this. This was, this is, I was like just looking for innocuous signs. Like, I don't know, where are they? Are they here? I don't know. I can't tell. And so I never really saw complete signs until one day the heart started showing up and I started seeing hearts everywhere. And the hearts to me were like little love notes from spirit to where it was like, we may not be answering you directly, but we want you to know we are here on your behalf and we are here and you are not alone. And those hearts became sort of like breadcrumbs on my path. Like as long as I know they're here, then I know that I'm being guided and I just have to trust myself that I'm making good decisions and that those decisions are divine. So a lot of the communication sometimes is just those breadcrumbs. Sometimes it's not like a blaring uh, billboard that says you are on the right path, but rather it can be symbols. So when you're looking for signs, get really clear because it's as well, you might be asking for your loved ones to communicate. You may as well be inviting those who have crossed over into this meditation. And with that, you might want them to leave signs. So get clear about the kind of signs that you're looking for. So if you wanna see feathers, if you wanna see stars, I have people who are like, I wanna see an elephant. I wanna see an elephant. And if I see three elephants, I'm gonna take that elephant as a sign that this is a yes. So I'll give you an example. You've looked at two houses, both of them in your price range. One is a little more expensive than the other. And the one that's a little more expensive would be a big push for you to have to purchase. Like if you're really looking at the monthly, even though it's a couple dollar difference, it's a big difference to you. But let's be honest, the more expensive house is totally the one you want, but you don't trust yourself. So you decide you're going to ask your guides for signs and you say to your guides and your angels, guys, I need a sign. 
I want to see three elephants today, or I want to see three elephants in the next 48 hours so I know whether or not this house is mine. If the more expensive house is meant to be mine, then show me three elephants. Now, what will happen is that you will be hanging out with a girlfriend at coffee and you'll be talking about something totally not relating to elephants and she'll stop you mid conversation and be like, Oh my God. So I was reading national geographic last night and I saw some elephants and it just really made me think, and that'll be your first elephant. Right. And these are just examples. The next one will be, you'll be shopping at target. An elephant is not in season and it should not be on any of the pillows or any of the pictures, but suddenly it's like they are everywhere. Like it's on a t-shirt when you walk in the, in, into Target, there's your second elephant and you're like, okay, second elephant. But because you're a safety person and because you want proof, you're not going to look at all the elephants in Target and go one, two, three, four, I guess I'm buying the house because the house is above your pay grade. Because the house isn't actually in your financial yes button. So you want proof from your guys. And elephant's hard. Elephant's not in everyday life. Elephant is not just showing up wherever you go. So you think to yourself, all right, that's two elephants. Now where's the third? And you've given spirit 48 hours to respond. And let's say at the end of 48 hours, you don't see another elephant. She'll two. And you can sit there and you can justify to yourself, well, there was two, but if I counted all the ones in Target, it would have been enough elephants to say that spirit was talking. And you buy the house. Or you look inside of yourself and you trust for a second that maybe spirit is delivering the right message. Maybe two elephants means not yet. Not yet. And if you trust that, and let's say you say no to the house and you say to your, your spouse or whoever you're buying the house with, maybe you're buying it alone. Maybe you say, okay, not yet. That's not the house. And do I really want the lesser of the two houses? And you decide you're going to keep looking, okay? Because you didn't get a clear answer from spirit. So you keep looking. And about two weeks later, the same house that you wanted that was above your pay grade goes on sale meaning like they lower the price to us. That feels like a sale, right? They lower the price of the house that you wanted, that you were asking spirit for, and they only give you two elephants. So it was like an almost yes, but not yet. So you ask spirit again, spirit, is this my house? Am I supposed to have this house? You have 12 hours to answer this one because I got to put in an offer if this is truly supposed to be my house. And I want to see three elephants. And all of a sudden, you're driving down the road and you look up at a billboard and there's a billboard with an elephant and a beer can on it. And you're like, well, elephant number one. And then you get into a board meeting with your, with your colleagues and somebody's talking about how they just booked a safari to Africa and they can't wait to see an elephant. And then you're somewhere else and it's like a glass figurine tip jar at the coffee house is an elephant. And you go, there's my three elephants. And the difference is, is that you listened to your guides and your angels, but you also trusted yourself and you trusted that two was not three. And you listened and you went into yourself and you decided what felt right to you. So the guides and the angels aren't the sole provider of information. You are still the sole provider of information for yourself. You still have to trust what's coming in. But if the story becomes the truth for you, then what also happens in the story is that you got a house, you won a house essentially for the price tag you could afford because you listened to your guides, you waited and you trusted. And suddenly you buy this house at the rate you can afford. Now, this is just a story, right? But this is a story that could easily happen to you. This is a story that when you're tapped into your guides and angels, this becomes a true reality, as well as when you've ignited your intuition. If you've not watched that masterclass, I'll say it again, go back and do it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to stop here, pause here. And I mean, don't stop your video, but we're going to pause here and we're going to do a little meditation and call in your guides and angels. 
So I want you to find a comfortable place for yourself to just simply sit down and get cozy wherever you are. Close your eyes. And I want you to begin to simply breathe. Begin to breathe. Attaching yourself to the breath, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Ha. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Noticing how the breath actually grounds you. Because when you stop to simply remember to breathe, it's like calling your spirit in. It's landing your energy right here. It's moving you out of your brain and into your heart. And as you breathe, just notice how gravity feels on top of your body. Notice how it feels like gravity presses you into your chair or if you're in your bed. Notice how the gravity feels. Breathing still. Begin to allow yourself to open up to this idea of possibilities with this idea that life feels like and can be a choose your own ending novel. And that ultimately it is your choice and your responsibility to pick the path of least resistance, to move into your passion to allow for yourself to ignite your purpose, to be truthful to yourself, and to trust that you are here at this moment in time on earth for a real reason, for a true purpose. And there's not one part of you that is broken or that is missing or that is not good enough or that is not ready to answer to your highest call. You are divinely guided. You are divinely anointed and meant to be here in the true and whole expression of yourself, of what you want to dance in the light of all that you love, to feel the power and the energy that lives inside of your bones and outside of your being. You are a magnificent manifester of all that you desire and so completely abundant and filled with opportunity. Take a deep breath here. And we begin to call in your angelic team the angels that have been with you since birth and beyond. Your angels who have been divinely guiding you all this time. And while they do not need an invitation, it is here with grace and with gratitude that you invite them, that you give them permission to continue to guide your life 
and to continue to participate at your highest level to help illuminate and show you the way that is the best path for you. Thank your angels for being here on your behalf, for having kept you safe as best they can along your way. And notice the feelings, the colors, the vibration, the sound of your angels as they pass through. Give yourself a moment to communicate and feel free to hand over any anxiety, worry, question, curiosity. And here designate a sign that you might use in the next 48 hours for them to see you and for you to see them so that you may have proof that they are there working on your behalf. And in your next breath, begin to invite in your guides, your personal guides, those who have been assigned to your specific journey your purpose, your current path. Invite in all the specific guides that you feel your life needs right now. Invite in your health guides. Invite in your money guides. Invite in your parenting guides. Invite in your career guides. Invite in your entrepreneurial guides. Invite in your confidence guides. Invite in your expression guides. Invite in anyone that you need for the specifications of the help you're looking for. And give all of these guides permission to work and participate on your behalf today and all days and in all ways, handing over questions, needs, doubts, concerns, anything that it is that you need your guides to begin answering to. Hand over all of that information in faith and gratitude. And begin to connect to the sign or symbol. It can be the same as the angels, or you can assign a different sign or symbol with your guides that you would like them to answer to. Ask them, please, for clear direction. Ask them to speak to you in your dreams or out loud in the middle of the day. Ask them to give you great visualizations. Ask them to help you feel yes or no.
Ask them to be a part of your team and thank them very much for how they will continue to communicate from here on forward. In your next breath, feel free to invite in any loved ones that have crossed over with whom you would like to communicate with regularly. Any loved ones on the other side that you are missing, that you feel would be lovely additions to your world that will help you guide your way through. Invite them in. Thank them for continuing to be a part of your life, even if it is not in a physical form. Ask them for clear signs as well, and give them a sign that feels unique to them so that you know that it is specifically the person you called. Take a deep breath here and imagine that you are in a big, beautiful living room filled with all of your favorite artifacts and things from your life, photographs, mementos, comfortable couch, beautiful warm afghan. And imagine there's a celebration happening in this beautiful space that is of your own creation. The celebration of you. The invitation for you. The welcome home party. For you. It's here that your guides, your angels, and your loved ones meet you with open arms, with love so bountiful that there are no limitations for how much they can contain and love you. It is here that you have permission and are divinely guided to fully move into everything you have ever wanted. It is here that you live in the full expression and truth of who you are. It is this space, this room, and this place that any time you feel you are not aligned when you feel you've been knocked off course. It's here that you can come in meditation and find your loved ones, your angels, and your guides. It's here that you'll be reminded that you are not alone, that you are divinely guided and that you are meant to be here on planet Earth right now. It's here that they'll hand you pieces of the map you're looking for, where you will be guided, where you will be seen, felt, and heard. Feel the warmth, the love, and the space Notice the possibilities, the doorways, the opportunities. Allow yourself to feel into the full expansion of your personal power. Feel the strength, 
the courage and the confidence that comes with being inside this circle, this space, this place of deep comfort and knowing. Imagine yourself with wings that know no limits, that can fly you and get you wherever it is that you would like to go. Take a deep breath and process that you don't have to leave this feeling here in this room, but that you can walk out into the world with this energy, with this power and with this deep righteous knowing. And in the next breath, thank your guides, thank your angels, thank your loved ones, and thank yourself for taking the time to explore your intuition and begin the true living that is yours to live. Deep breath and open your eyes. Just take a little moment here and wiggle out your toes and your body. This meditation is for you to come back to anytime you want, anytime you need to tap in. Anytime you lose your way, you have this meditation. So come back in. This is always our next big question. How can I trust that they will answer? And all I can tell you is you can, but one of the things that we do to thwart the trust is we put expectations on it. And expectations are sort of the cock block to spirit. They stop spirit from flowing in. So as mentioned before, to trust that they're really answering, to give them symbols, to give them ways to communicate with you, that's going to help you trust that they're in fact responding. And it'll help you understand when the messaging is coming in. They come in all formats, the messages. I notice that mine often come in my dreams, but I also notice that when I'm alone driving down the road or first thing in the morning when I pop in the shower or even sometimes in the middle of the night, I'll wake up with a <gasps> and I'll feel like this breath of life has just come to me. There's no one way that they're responding to you, but it is very similar to how your intuition works for you. And you may notice initially that there are big, bold, amazing messages coming for you. And so they're going to deliver messages any way they can. Sometimes they come through strangers. Sometimes they come through friends. Sometimes they come through dreams. It just varies. But see if you can start seeing symbolism in your life and noticing maybe things you didn't notice before. That's how they're going to start communicating. When you are clear about how you receive intuition, which is the Ignite Your Intuition Masterclass, and tell them what works for you, then they can deliver what you need the way you need it. Be clear about the signs you want to see for a yes answer, for a yes. Listen for the answers, look for the signs. And above all, always trust yourself. Always trust yourself, okay? I just loved this from Bonnie Raitt. Just give me one thing that I can hold on to because to believe in this living is just a hard way to go. So with this class, with this knowledge of your guides and your angels, 
you're not alone and I'm giving you something to hold on to. I'm giving you something to believe in. Hopefully this will help. Sometimes it looks like things are really messy, right? Sometimes it looks like we can't see through it and we project and or other people project onto us. And so just a little quick story so that you understand why it's so important for us to get in touch with our intuition and why it's so important for us to sort of clean up our side of the street, meaning if we don't take responsibility for our actions, if we're not asking for help, if we're not empowering ourselves, then we become projections of what we hate, don't like, and don't understand in the world. And if you, like me, are noticing that the world feels very divisive and not very um, collective at this moment, then this is an extra important lesson for you. So this is a story that my mentor, Sonia Choquette, shared with me at a workshop, and I just will share the same with you. There's a husband and wife, and the wife says to her husband one day, oh my God, look at the neighbors just moved in and their dirty laundry's all out on their porch. It's disgusting. I can't believe it. The HOA should do something about this. It's just awful. And the husband reading his newspaper kind of looks up and goes, oh yeah, yeah, it's real dirty. And he goes to reading his newspaper and the next day they wake up and it's even dirtier over there. And the woman's like, oh my God, Earl, did you see this? It's just, it's gotten even messier than it was yesterday. The HOA is going to have to come in and tell these people that we don't live like this. We are clean people and we don't put our laundry out for the neighbors to see. And these people need to get their shit together. And Earl's like, yup, yup. Oh yeah, I guess it's a little dirtier for sure. The next morning they wake up and the woman comes outside. Now she's just furious. She is going to call the HOA for sure. She just cannot even believe that these new neighbors are just so destructive with their space. How could they possibly not clean up after themselves? I mean, the laundry is still out there. Why is it so dirty? I, she just is blown away by this entire thing. And Earl is just like, yeah, honey. Yeah, we'll definitely, we'll get on that. We'll call the HOA. We'll figure this out. So the next morning, she wakes up, rushing to the window to like see what else the neighbors have gotten up to. And she goes, Earl, they cleaned. It's clean. Like they, they did it. I, we didn't need to call the HOA, it turns out. And he goes, oh yeah, I woke up early this morning and I cleaned the windows. I didn't want you having to call the HOA on somebody else. So the point of the story, the fable of the story is that she was looking at her own shit, right? She was looking her eyes were looking through her own shit. She was projecting her dirty window or her sort of visual of the world onto somebody else. And we do this so often. We project our shit on another person. But when we clean up our side of the street, when we clean our window, when we can see clearly out of our own window, we're not so busy focusing and creating sort of these judgments or criticisms on anybody else, but we start taking responsibility for our actions. And that goes to this place of trust, this deep knowing and this deep space of trust that when we are actually taking care of ourselves and being honest with ourselves, sort of the whole wide world opens up in that way. And when we tap into our guides and our angels, they are the ones that are going to help us have the strength, the perseverance, and understand what it means to take responsibility for our actions. They are going to help guide us in better ways to the books that are going to enlighten us, to the people that are going to enlighten us, to the projects that are going to be better for our soul. So that helps us clean up our sides so that we are not projecting back onto the world our disappointment, our fear, or our conditioning, right? We can clean that up. You are not alone. To me, the guides and the angels, that's what this is all about, is that you are not alone. When you tap into your guides and your angels and feel the love and the support that is always around you and with you. Isn't that a lovely thought? When you tap in, you're not alone. So Rise Unlimited is an open door policy. I have this program that I've created 
that will help build your intuition, that will help you build your trust muscles, that'll help you stay in tact with your guides and in touch with your guides and your angels. It'll help you clean that window and keep that window clean so that you're not projecting anything but what it is that you want in the world. And if you really noticed in this space of, of connecting with your guides, the places and the questions and the curiosities that you wanted answers to, this program is for you. Rise Unlimited. It's a 12-week journey for yourself, though you can take all the time you want, and it's a lifetime experience. So whatever is in this program over the 12 weeks that you sign up for, you can retake it over and over and over again as often as you like. I'm here always for questions. I'm always here for personal readings and one-to-ones if you need that as well. But at the end of the day, I just ask you to look inside of yourself and see what it is that you're wanting most in your life right now and what might be holding you back from that and how your guides and angels might be able to attune to that and how they might serve you. And if you find yourself still not fully in alignment, please join me with Rise Unlimited so that we can remove any blocks, anything standing in your way of you becoming everything that is in your full expression to become. Because it's when you step into the full embodiment of who you are and what you want that you rise without limitation. All right. Lots of love, you guys. Peace in. And I look forward to knowing you more. Don't hesitate ever to ask for help. And please, 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 if you have any questions, reach out. Willow Bradner, Gmail. Okay? Lots of love. Bye, you guys.